Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Rupa Prabhupada. Welcome to this morning's Shrimad Bhavatam class. It's from Canto 1, Chapter 19, and Text 6. We're very fortunate this morning to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami to give the class. Hare Krishna, my Lord, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Rupa Prabhupada. Okay. Wow. And it's all yours, Maharaj. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Navailas Navailasak Chid Ulasis Bis Yumisram. Vishnangri Rainya Vyadi Kambu Netri. Unati loka ubayatra sheshan kastam sevatam marisyam manaha. Translation The river by which the king sat to fast carries the most auspicious water, which is mixed with the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord and the tulasi leaves. Therefore, the Lord sanctifies the three worlds inside and out, and even sanctifies Lord Shiva and other demigods. Consequently, anyone who is destined to die must take shelter of this river. Purport. Maharaj Pariksit, after receiving the news of his death within seven days, at once retired from family life and shifted himself the sacred bank of the Jamuna River. Generally, it's said that the king took shelter on the bank of the Ganges, but according to Srila Jiva Goswami, the king took shelter on the bank of the Jamuna. Srila Jiva Goswami's statement appears to be more accurate because of the geographical situation. Maharaj's Parikshits resided in his camp of Hastinapur, which is situated near present Delhi, and the river Jamuna flows down past the city. Naturally, the king would take shelter of the river Jamuna because she was flowing past his palace door. And as far as sanctity is concerned, the river Jamuna is more directly connected with Krishna than the Ganges. The Lord sanctified the river Jamuna from the beginning of his transcendental pastimes in the world. While his father, Vasudev, was crossing the Jamuna with the baby or Krishna for a safe place at Gokul on the outer bank of the river from Mathura, the Lord fell down in the river. And by the dust of his lotus feet, the river at once became sanctified. It is especially mentioned herein that Maharaj Pariksha took shelter of that particular river which is beautifully flowing, carrying the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord mixed with the Tulsi's leaf. Lord Krishna's lotus feet are always besmeared with Tulsi leaves, and thus, as soon as his lotus feet contacted the water of the Ganga and the Jamuna, the rivers became at once sanctified. The Lord, however, contacted River Jamuna more than the Ganges, according to Varaha Parana, as quoted by Shiva Gojiva Goswami. <laughs> there is no difference between the water of the Ganges and the water of the Jamuna. But when the water of the Ganges is sanctified 100 times, it is called the Jamuna. Similarly, it is said in the scriptures that 1,000 names of Vishnu are equal to one name of Rama. And three names of Lord Rama are equal to one name of Krishna. Om Gyan Timidam Vasya Gyan Ajana Savakaya. Chaksun Militam Nena Tasma Shri Gurava Maha. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutari. Nimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinam Nena Nastaya Sarasvati Deve. Goravani Pachari Nair Vasesa Sunya Vadi Pasyatya Satarani 
Panchakalpa Tarubascha Kripa Sindhu Pe Bacha Patitana Mpavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadabhana Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so temples, pure devotees, Srimad Bhagavatam, Tosi Devi, um, uh, Mahapusharam, these are all places of spiritual uh, sanctity, spiritual purity, along with sacred rivers. And throughout the subcontinent of India, there are thousands of sacred rivers. That means that in these rivers, <clears throat> they were in connected with the activities of the Lord and the pure devotee. And either the Lord or the pure devotee has the power to sanctify any place. <laughs> says wherever the pure devotee goes, that place becomes a tirta or a place of pilgrimage where people can benefit spiritually by going there. So sacred rivers, we see um, out of all of the sacred rivers, the Saraswati, the Jamuna, and the Ganga are considered to be the three most sacred of all the three sacred rivers. And especially the Jamuna, because the Jamuna is very much connected with Krishna's pastimes in Vindana. And therefore, as it mentions here, the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord permeates the Jamuna River. And anyone who bathes in the Jamuna or uses the Jamuna for worship gets immense spiritual benefit. The same with the Ganga. The Ganga also is, is very powerful spiritual. And it says that simply by bathing in the Ganga, one can be freed from all the reactions of all sinful activities. But here, there is a comparison made in terms of spiritual potency. Just like there are many pure devotees, and but some pure devotees have more spiritual power than other pure devotees. Although they're both pure, there is a qualitative difference between certain levels of purity based on the intensity of how that purity manifests in their devotion to Krishna. And, but still, purity is purity. But ultimately, there are different intensities. They just like sugar is sweet, but if you take sugar and put it into a candy form, the sweetness becomes concentrated. You take that same sugar and you put it into rock candy, which is just pure solid sugar, then that's the intensity of that sweetness has reached a maximum point. So the sweetness is there in honey, sweetness is there in gore, Sweetness is there in various uh, other elements that are also contain that element of sweetness. But the intensity of it is uh, in gradation to the intensity of the sweetness. So, or the concentratedness is the intensity of the sweetness. So, Jamuna is the best of all rivers. And, Actually, when Krishna came to the material world, he asked Mother Jamuna to accompany him in his pastimes before she, he actually came to the material world. So Jamuna and Govardhan, both, Govardhan, Hell, and Jamuna, preceded Lord Krishna's appearance in the material world when he came to perform his pastimes and therefore, the, this river, Jamuna, is actually a resident of the spiritual world. She has manifested herself in the material world 
to assist the Lord in his pastimes. And therefore, in one sense, on the absolute platform, that she can also purify by anyone who simply um, worships her as an object of devotion and takes advantage of that worship by bathing in her waters. Of course, we might even say even higher than that is, uh, is Radha Kun, where the intensity of purity has reached the level of the, the topmost, wherein it is non-different from Shimati Radharani, who is no non-different than uh, the highest form of spiritual attainment. So out of all of the uh, reservoirs of ro ro water in terms of rivers, again, Jamuna is, is the highest. But when you take it even higher, you come to Shamakund and Radakund, the personal bathing places of the Supreme Lord and his internal energy, Shumati Radharani. And out of the two, Shumati Radharani's place and happiness, that's mentioned in the Mukta of Instructions. That one who achieves Radha Kun has achieved spiritual perfection to the utmost. But here you can see that the Acharyas are concerned to give us a clear understanding of the qualitative difference between the Jamuna and the Ganges. <laughs> so both are very powerful and spiritual. And uh, And um, Maharaj Parikshit, uh, he he only has seven days left, and so he wants to maximize those last days by be, be, being free from all tendencies towards material life and attachments. And so he gives up everything in terms of his connections with his occupation as king, his family members, his relationships outside of the family and outside of the, the responsibilities of king, everything. And he simply uh, wants to purify himself. And here is the ultimate means by which he can cure. He's in the pure atmosphere on the banks of the Ganges. And at the same time, he's hearing from the pure soul Sukadeva Goswami. And he's hearing the pure transcendental nectar coming from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Amalam Paradam, the highest form of spiritual knowledge given on this particular planet, or actually anywhere in the universe. Bhagavatam is the best. Therefore, one who regularly hears Bhagavatam can associate with Krishna directly. And that is not a euphemism, that is simply a statement that is given by the Acharyas in the scriptures. One who regularly hears Master Prayesu Abhidrashu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloti Bhakti Bhavati Naistiti. This hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam brings one to the point of uh, pure love for Krishna. If that, in, that hearing is done with rapt attention and with regularity, that means every day in, the, in, the, in, a, in a mood of absorbing oneself in the transcendental knowledge of Bhagavatam. Devotees should take advantage of this wonderful scripture which is available. It's not that we have Srimad Bhagavatam, it looks very nice, so many nice volumes. We decorate our wall by, by getting a bookcase and putting it in there, and uh, we don't open it up. Sometimes I go to places, and they have a Bhagavatam wall, and the, the plastic wrappings on each of the volumes are still there, and that means people are not even reading them. So that is not the way to honor Bhagavatam. The way to honor Bhagavatam is to read it, is <laughs> to hear from it, to hear from devotees who, who are living Bhagavatam, those who dedicate their lives to the Supreme Lord in devotion are considered to be 
walking Bhagavatam. And when they speak about Bhagavatam, then you're getting direct spiritual purity coming. And if you hear with rapt attention, you can free yourself from all reactions of all sinful activities simply by hearing it. And if you continue to hear in that way and engage in service to the Lord, you can reach the stage of becoming a pure devotee, which is the natural constitutional position of all, all Jiva souls. So Maharaj Pariksit, he is showing by example I mean, what is the duty of a man about to die. As Prabhupada, I think he ends the purport by saying that everyone should take advantage of Bhagavatam. Everyone should take advantage of these holy rivers. Everyone who is, who is about to die, and we're all about to die, that is a fact, because if you have a body, the body will end at a certain time. It may, it may be here for another 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, or whatever, or maybe here for another 50 seconds or whatever, but it's temporary. Uh, of course, the soul is the individual, and the soul lives within the body. The body the soul. We're just discussing what he lived his previous life and how he died in his previous life. So this life that we're in is not the first life. We have bodies, life after life after life. But the idea is to get free from this bodily uh, conception of life and attain to the spiritual realm where we get our spiritual body and then we live eternally in the environment which is natural to our existence. Living in this material world is not a natural state because we are not material. We are a fish out of water. We are locked into this body simply by our desire to enjoy this material world. And therefore, we receive, by the grace of the Lord, the facility to try to fulfill those desires by receiving a material body. One material body may be more beneficial to enjoy material life than others, but in any case, the material body is a burden, even for those who are have a good material body and have been able to use it to acquire many material things, such as a nice position, good wealth, good family members. All of these appear to be some success, but ultimately it's all temporary and will leave one in due course of time. Therefore, one who's actually intelligent and does not try to arrange their life in such a way to establish some kind of temporary happiness. One who's actually intelligent will aspire for that which is the real destination of the soul's existence, the spiritual world. And then, then according and, and by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and by serving the, the pure devotee, then one will move forward on the path back home and back to Godhead, which is the ultimate goal of life. So Maharaj Pariksit, he's teaching that by his example, and he's showing how that should play itself out. He's not going into the office or into the palace. He's going to a sacred river. And he, he's not just hearing from anyone. He's hearing from the best of all orators of the of pure nectar of transcendental knowledge, Sukadev Goswami, who is ultimately an intimate associate of Srimati Radharani. So, uh, um, yeah. So he's showing us that when we, uh, as we make advancement, we should be more and more inclined to to uh, organize our life in a way that we can exit this world in the best possible way, not encumbered by so many material things and expect to reach pure consciousness at the time of death. Um, we have to leave everything behind 
and go to an atmosphere which is conducive to um, you know, leaving the material world. And here, the, the uh, banks of the Jamuna, as it's been explained, and the association of Sukadev Goswami, along with thousands of other sages who came also to meet this great king who was the king of the world, but now he has given everything up just to teach that here is how you live your life in the last part of your life. After you die in the family, surrounded by crying relatives. <laughs> <laughs> That's another miserable situation, which also may divert the one's attention and mind away from and the, the goal of life. So, yeah, holy rivers, holy people, and then holy women. <laughs> and, of course, holy books, we might bow with them. Maharaj Pariksit heard from for for seven full days. And as it's explained in the very end of the Bhagavatam, at one point he came, he became completely self-realized, completely detached from his body. He was on the spiritual platform. So when he left his body, it was easy because he had left the bodily concept of life before then, and so when it came time to leaving his body, it was very easy, even though he apparently died in a very difficult way, being burnt by the poisonous fire of this very powerful snake bird, the uh, Tatsa, very powerful. That bird had such power that he could throw his poison into a tree and the tree would just immediately burst into flames and disintegrate. The Maharaj Pariksha had to die like that, but he was completely oblivious or transcendental to anything that was happening to his body because he was completely, he was already fixed in the spiritual world, in consciousness. So leaving his body was not a difficulty. It was easy. Although the body went through a lot of turmoil, still he was aloof from that whole situation. And that's described in the very end of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And so we can we should learn from these examples. This is what Bhagavatam is about. It's teaching us who are hearing Bhagavatam, who are living in a, a present situation how we should organize our life and move towards the goal of life your self-realization and not waste time simply trying to make an arrangement in this material world to extend our existence here we can't do that everyone has their a lot of time and when that a lot of time is up and then and one moves to the next stage. So no one can change that. Only the only one who can change that is Krishna. Krishna can give you more time, or he can cut your life short and bring you back to the spiritual world sooner than it was destined by karma or by providence. By providence. Only Krishna can extend your life. Or shorten your life. So don't worry about trying to do that yourself. <laughs> Just become Krishna conscious. That's it. <laughs> okay. Thank Krishna. you very much. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, Maharaj, for a very, very nice lecture. And I'm sitting here taking a lot of notes for <laughs> the same time. So much that you can learn from this. Um, everybody, I'm going to stop sharing. Please, um, let's see you and we have a nice, wonderful discussion of questions and answers or takeaways. Please turn your cameras on. Right.
Now, anyone who is interested, please unmute yourself, or you can just electronically raise your hand, and I'll call you to share what you want to share. Hare Krishna. All right. So, in the meantime, while the bodies are thinking of this, let me take my my um. And she is coming home from the altar. She was she was here to wake the Lord up this morning, so mm -hmm. she's on the way back. That's why she's not on today. Yeah, she but, told me she would. Oh, oh okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, the bodies, you have any question? Please unmute yourself. Um. Okay. Nobody just yet. I'm looking down. Which means everything is clear. <laughs> That's what we we'll assume. But if you have takeaways too, you can definitely um, you know talk about that now. I have some takeaways um, that I learned that was new today. Takshaka, the snake bird, that he has poison that we said when he bit Maharaj breaks it, then his body turned to flames. But that, as you explained, he already had become his body had become spiritualized from this hearing from Shukadev Goswami. So that the effect of the poison didn't really affect him and he just left in a glorious way of course in front of all of these sages so all right that's one okay in the meantime i will i will i will switch to those who want to speak mataji you said iphone but i know who you are please i'll meet yourself and then start talking Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, sometimes uh, when uh, uh, the mind uh, is, uh, is dark, uh, is, uh, is cover, um, thinking uh, um, uh, I, I am not uh, qualified to uh, reading uh, Srimad Bhagavatam uh, or, uh, or the other uh, spiritual lecture, no? But it's a, a, a joke for, uh, for, the, for my mind. And uh, in uh, that uh, uh, moment, uh, I, for, I, I, I need to um, remember uh, the spiritual, uh, uh, the the import the um, the importance of a spiritual company, no, because uh, uh, spiritual uh, company uh, we wake up uh, and uh, clarify the the, the mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is... Yeah. What you say is correct. When the mind gets covered, the mind gets bewildered, and mind begin gives gives us the wrong information. And um, the solution is in Sado Sangha or association with devotees, and then the mind will be drawn into that association and somewhat free from its own uh, uh, tricks. So the mind will trick you. Mm -hmm. But when you association with devotees, you take time to speak about Krishna or speak about devotional activities. And you can also have a chance to serve the devotees in that atmosphere. So yeah. that is a spiritual atmosphere forming spiritual activities then the mind is your friend. But when you're not in that environment, then the mind can go wherever it wants to go. So, therefore, even if we're not in association with devotees, we can always chant the holy name of the Lord anytime. Yeah. That's always available. We can always chant the holy name of the Lord. We can also pick up the Bhagavatam and read. So we always have these two spiritual, powerful objects within our connection. But best if we, when we go is to have, get the association of the world. If it's not possible, you can chant. 
You can read. You can also worship. Yeah. Thank you so much. Grazie. Grazie. You're in London now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm uh, in uh, Bhaktivedanta Manor. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. so happy. <laughs> oh, Felice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm too much. You are happy. I'm. <laughs> a lot of happy. <laughs> you are, uh, if you are in Bhakti Vedanta Manor, I'm very happy. <laughs> Gokulananda Ditis is very, very, very sweet. And, yeah, beautiful also. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Bele. <laughs> <laughs> What beauty, huh? Che belle. <laughs> Breaks it back to you. <laughs> I I don't understand that you speak with me. No. Speaking with uh Brixit Prabhu. Okay. <laughs> You're on mute, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you about that. So I was just talking about so many, I was just, you know, this is just a realization. Many important points come in these lectures. This is need to be helped to transform your life. And as he was speaking about Maharaj Pariksit hearing from Shukadeva Goswami, and then he became, you know, purified in the same way if we hear Srimad Bhavatam and also do service, then the purification will come eventually. I was reading yesterday, um, actually I was going on with my reading and recording Srimad Bhavatam right now I'm in Canto 117th chapter. And Sri Prabhupada was talking about how important it is that devotees should really strive towards purity because when non-devotees come and associate with a pure person, they really, really benefit tremendously spiritually. So then I was realizing sometimes we, out of humility, we say, oh, I'll never be a pure devotee. But it's not being a pure devotee to brag. It's just being a pure devotee so other people can be benefited in our association. So then I was just, you know, I was thinking about it, and you just mentioned also about this uh, hearing Srimad Bhavatam and doing service, and doing service, chanting, hearing Srimad Bhavatam and doing service, you eventually get purified. So it's wide open for us, Krishna is not choosing some people as pure devotees and others are not as pure devotees. It just depends on our own effort and our own regular hearing. And that yeah. was the, Everyone has the potential to become pure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, pure means uh, no material desires, no material attachments, getting fully engaged in devotional service. Mm -hmm. These are symptoms of, of pure devotional service. So important, so important because in, especially in advanced countries, we are always being bombarded with something material. Every time you're listening to something spiritual on YouTube and they interrupt with the commercial to teach you something new that's come up. Mm. So, yeah, problems. Just, button, so. <laughs> just ignore it. <laughs> Keep going. 
Yeah, yeah. If you give attention to Maya, then she got you. But mm. if you give attention, after some time, she'll give up. Mm. Just don't give her any attention. Okay. Any other questions? Any other takeaways? Any other questions, Maharaj? I don't see any. Are you good, Maharaj? Please accept my humble obeisance. He's all beliefs, he's all beliefs, all beliefs, the shirt of every God. Okay. This is Brett. Sorry, Brett, I'm not putting on my video. I'm on my way to work. I'm not sure if you can hear me well. Um, hey, come. Okay. Um, but Maharaj, you, you were speaking on, you know, how how some non-devotees, you know, were born with this material body and and different material bodies have, you know, different benefits or, or facilitations towards, you know, material gain. Uh, looking at on like the spiritual side of things, you know, how for my own benefit to grow in Krishna consciousness, how can we, you know, develop a mood of not limiting ourselves, but at the same time, you know, if it has to do with health, understanding our limits when it comes to say the, you know, say like, you know, I, I, I might not be good at cooking. So then I steer away from, you know, helping cut vegetables or I might not be good at, you know, musical instruments. So I steer away from participating in kirtan or, you know, I might not be good at social interaction. So I steer away from book distribution. Is there, you know, is there benefit in us and our association to try to remind ourselves that, hey, you know, this the services for Krishna and we can, you know, have create better facilitations through our health and, and just practicing our practice to be better to serve. All right, well. You're hitting on another big topic and that is Swadharma or Varashram Dharma, our natural propensities from the material perspective. And Krishna mentions that in the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaturvanya Mahasrishna Guna Karmic Vigana Bhagasap. Four kinds of people, Kshatriyas, Brahmins, Vaishyas, and Sudras. He created these four. Swadharma means your material tendencies. So um, in Krishna consciousness, we can accept any service. But when we actually accept that service, which is in line with our material nature, and serve in that way, we actually blossom in that service. And that service... Is, has great benefit for others. So that's the Vanashram system, and that's what Srila Prabhupada wanted in our society. And uh, it's also a topic that is now being uh, discussed more and implemented more in different ways. So, but when we find ourselves in a situation where we can't work according to our natural propensities, we can just understand that whatever service that I've been given, um, it can also elevate me in my Krishna consciousness if I do it uh, in, a, in a way that is pleasing to Krishna. That means I should do it in the best of my ability with a desire to please the Lord. But uh, ideally is what Prabhupada had, wants to establish, and that is the Daivi Vanarshram, working according to your tendencies. But that may not always be there in every particular temple or yatra. Some temples, more or less, allow that. And others are on the uh, principle of using whatever manpower they have to get the job done, even though people are not inclined to that particular type of service due to their natures being different. But um, we even accepting the compromise position, still we can make we can make advancement in devotional service. I hope that's helpful to you, Brett. Thank you, Thank you, Maharaj. Especially that last point, you know, accepting our compromise position. Very well. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but. Service is absolute. Mm. Thank you, Max. So that means that whatever is necessary, even though you have certain tendencies, jump in and do whatever service to make sure that the total service to the divine couple is always going on. Thank you. Thank you, Max. 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 Thank you,
Yeah, the, the only problem is people can't do those services that are not inclined to in the long run. They can mm. do situations. The only ones who can do it in the long run are the pure devotees who are above all of these material tendencies. Mm. Most of us are not, and so we have inclinations according to our swadharma, our material tendencies to serve in a certain way. And when we hit upon them and work in, in that capacity, we can do amazing service. Mm. And that's Prabhupada's program of Ranarsha. It's mm. already been done, but in, not, in a less organized way. <laughs> You want to get it to the point where it's organized. And that that is a that is a feature of you know, the society. Society has to develop that area more and more. Mm. But until that develops, it doesn't mean you don't do anything. It doesn't mean because I'm not working hard in my capacity, I won't do anything. No. You'll still make benefit by accepting any service and then and then going with that. Thank you, Matt. Stand speaking and taking notes at the same time. <laughs> it's always a very, very valuable for helping us to grow. Anyone else that wants to unmute themselves and ask a question or share a takeaway? Well, you have the opportunity. Come on, devotees, wake up. What do you guys yeah. do? <laughs> out there. I see people who normally ask questions every single, and I wouldn't want to point at people, every single lecture they had a question and they have a meeting and they're just looking at me. I'm going, hmm. <laughs> it's a different day today. <laughs> Maybe Anastasia will come and just jack you all up. <laughs> so you can... Do some more. Hare Krishna. 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 Please accept my humble obeisance. It's all the rest of Shri Prabhupada. Um, yeah, when hearing this uh, pastime of uh, Maharaj Parikshit, um, I was comparing um, with Bhishma Deva's departure. Uh, it is also a very glorious departure where, uh, um, where he has... Uh, um, Lord Krishna in front of his eyes and um, he was meditate. he was constantly um, uh, meditating upon the pastimes of the Lord and uh, think, uh, seeing him face to face and he departed and um, Maharaj Parikshit also um, even though he didn't see the Lord face to face but uh, he was hearing Bhagavatam and uh, for the whole seven days and yeah so what um, yeah I want to um, so we can take a small, small, uh, we can take from each and every pastime or like Bhishma Deva's departure and mm -hmm. uh, Parikshit Maharaj's departure, we can take some takeaways. Uh, I, I felt Maharaj. Yeah, Bhishma Dev had the benediction and he could leave only when he wanted to. Yeah. And he, he was surrounded by not only Krishna, but many great souls were there. Yes. Maharaj Pariksit also was surrounded by many great souls. But mm -hmm. Krishna in his personal form was there in Bhagavatam, not in the form of his personal transcendental uh, body. He was there in Bhagavatam, which is non-different than Krishna ultimately. Yeah. Krishna, Krishna will always arrange the best possible situation accordingly for each of the individuals to leave the, the world where they can reach complete perfection. We just one has to be just be aware of how to organize their departure. Bhakti Vinod Thakur, when he left, he just disappeared. We went, no one knew where he went. And then he left the world on, in a secluded place by himself. Others were surrounded by great souls. 
So individually, we have one has to see what is the most conducive way to depart. <laughs> you, if you're surrounded by you, you're attached to relatives, that's one of the worst things. <laughs> Your relatives are crying, trying to drag you back to, you know, where <laughs> you, it's, you know, that's not at all conducive. And that could also destroy the person's ability to focus on Krishna. It will. And they may, because of that, because if your consciousness is a little deviated at the time of death, that deviation might be your, will become your destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're still thinking of your wife, your children, your husband, then uh, you'll get another birth. Mm -hmm. Yes, my uh, Sorry. Go yes, ahead, sir. Sir. No, no, I need. Thank you. Hey, Namrata Mataji, please go ahead. Sorry. I'll meet yourself. Hare Krishna. My humble obeisances of glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, Guru Maharaj, we have seen that many times when devotees, they're struggling with the, <coughs> sorry, they're struggling with some kind of disease, they're hospitalized, and at the last moment, they are, they are struggling to leave their bodies. And they're advised to uh, be taken at home rather than kept in the hospitals. So um, does that mean that they have some kind of attachment in their home where they want to leave their body? I, I'm lying. The last place that I would ever think of leaving is in the hospital. <laughs> I would never go to the hospital. At that point, at home, mm -hmm. members is not really conducive either. Best to, if you want to be at home, just keep all the family members away <laughs> and be surrounded by well wishing Vaishnavas. That's it. Eric is But what, what say? Yeah. Compare the hospital to the home, both are not really the place to go to the part. <laughs> because many times uh, I've seen some of those deaths, they, they don't want to leave their play, uh, their bodies in, in the uh, I don't know if, if they are at home, they they can leave their body easily that is how i have sensed because some of the bodies i have seen i mean some of the uh, souls i have seen like that they don't leave their body until they come home well that's because they feel more natural in that environment why do why not go to a holy place <laughs> yeah Mm. And that's what's recommended that for the movie, you go to the holy place. Bhakti Tirta Swami was a little different. He wanted to leave in Gita Nagari, and he did, just to make a point that Gita Nagari is also a holy place. Because Prabhupada spent time there and did service there. But generally, we see devotees. Or in, leave in Mayapur, or leave in Vrindavan. Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> you might feel more natural at home, but that doesn't mean you're going to be most. It's going to be more conducive to your spiritual journey. But I have another question regarding that. It's just like a piggyback question. What about a person leaving the body at home with family members who are all devotees? Would that be 
That's that's a little bit better, but still risky. Because mm -hmm. there's that there's that attachment there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. you don't want to allow anything that will remind you or associate with your your life in that world. You want to you want to leave everything behind. You have to leave everything behind as you leave. So if your consciousness is not left behind, you're you're going. You're gonna consciousness is gonna go where you where it's put. Mm. You think, oh, my loving wife or my loving husband, such a great devotee, then you you might come back again just to fulfill that desire to associate. And again, you might you'll come back as a devotee, no no question, but. Still, because there is still slight attachment to the opposite sex. <laughs> okay. A lot of times devotees leave in the presence of their spiritual master. That happens. And that's that's very conducive. Because if they if they have developed attachment to their spiritual master and they leave in that consciousness, that also will push them into the supreme destination. Mm. Okay. Now we're getting the whole scoop on how to go back to the spiritual world the details about it. Hey, Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Explaining. Do we stop here? Yeah. The buddies, uh, any last questions? If not, then Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance to talk with the Prabhupada. It's Anastuya Maharaj. Um, yeah. I just jumped in the last 15 minutes because I'm driving back from the temple. But Maharaj, I would like to ask a question. We hear so much about death. We hear so much about leaving our bodies. We hear so much about the importance of preparing ourselves like as if today is our last day. But at the same time, we go through this distraction in material life where we don't take life as emergency consciousness, uh, you know, the urgency of seeing that we can leave at any time. And we hear so much, but yes, but, but yet there is something, Marsh, that it's somehow not making us or devotees to really step up. What is holding us back, Maharaj? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> because, Marsh, I was talking to one of the leaders last night, you know, and I don't want to mention this devotee's name. And him and I, sometimes we share our you know, our managerial concerns and frustrations. And he's having the same problems as I have. Like, it's just so difficult and a challenge for, for devotees when they are so materially comfort, you know, comfortable to really see and that death can come upon us at any time. So what is holding us back with? And there's so many excuses. I'm well, just not getting it. Well, one of the things is if you're engaged in devotional service, you're on the spiritual platform. So Tamal Krishna Goswami asked that to Prabhupada, that sometimes I'm so engaged in devotional service, I think if I left my body, I wouldn't remember Krishna. Prabhupada said, well, Krishna will come automatically if you're absorbed in his service. And he said that also to one book distributor who said who had the same similar question. So if you're engaged in devotional service, you are not part of the material energy. How much you're engaged is how much you absorb your consciousness in that service. So if you're if you're in that energy, you don't have anything to worry. As soon as you step out of that energy, then you are subject to, you know, all kinds of other ideas and thoughts, and that could lead you to. Uh, a situation where if you do leave in that way, then you will be you'll be forced to take another body. But that's why we say Krishna consciousness is 24-7. It's not just 
24-5 and 24-6, 24-7. So every moment. And if we we give the formula, stay engaged in practical devotional service. If you're not doing that, should be chanting, should be reading, should be remembering Krishna in some way. Not a moment wasted on anything else. And then you you not you there's nothing to worry about. If you leave in that situation, you'll you'll attain perfection. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, so you're driving back, but you're <laughs> driving back from your service. You have to drive the car, you pay attention to the road <laughs> so you can drive. <laughs> And then while you <laughs> while you're paying attention to the road, you're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Not that you're simply paying attention to the road. You don't have your beads in your hand because you're holding the steering wheel. But you're chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Or if you're not doing that, you got some lecture playing on your little radio there or your little so. So wherever you are, try to connect with Krishna in something, whatever you're doing. Don't waste time. <laughs> no, you know, Prabhupada would quote the verse all the time. That if Maya's, Maya's everywhere, except if you look forward, you see Krishna. If you look up, right, left, back, side, this way, that way. My reward. So keep your mind, keep your focus on devotional service on Krishna, something spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's for consciousness. Thank hey. you, Maharaj. Whether you're hey. working at your job or working at, <laughs> at home with your family, you could always somehow or other connect everything to Krishna. Hey, Thank you, Maharaj. Madhuri, did you have another question? Because I know Balaji Prabhu has his hand up and yours is still up. And you were, maybe I take him first, then you, if you have another question. Okay, Prabhu, please go ahead. Balaji Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Prabhupada. Um, Maharaj, there are um, so many occasions. Uh, in a uh, real world where you know some of the people are uh, in bed in hospitals where you know uh, for years together they will be staying where they are unable to you know talk or you know communicate with people so normally you know we say we, we normally need to chant you know uh, Hare Krishna Mantra or something like that in uh, every day all the time right so for them you know, is it okay to at least, you know, play some, you know, Hare Krishna mantra nearby or, you know, some Bhagavatam, you know, online classes, things like that, uh, Maharaj? Yeah, that we do that. Because being in a debilitated situation, you might not be able to always chant on beats or to remember Krishna in the mind. Even that morning, Maharaj, I yeah, 10 years old, I understand that. What is that? Close your... There you go. Yeah, that's, we do that. We we play, we take that, they got that little Japan machine, that Prabhupada box, and, and you turned it on, it chants 24, it just keeps chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra over and over again. People have it in their homes. We use it in hospitals when devotees go to hospitals. They constantly hear the sound vibration of Prabhupada's chanting. Yeah. Or listening to lectures. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. That's, that, that should be done. Because sometimes, you know, while driving also, um, you know, I keep playing, you know, lectures and, you know, uh, even though we don't have beats, you know, keep chanting. So, hopefully, you know, that's uh, okay, Maharaj. 
Yeah, and you're getting something, not just, you're not, not only getting this pure sound vibration, you're learning the philosophy, getting interested. So we want to get interested in this philosophy. We want to get interested in Krishna. <laughs> we want to get interested in devotional service. We want to put all our other interests in a second position. Keep Krishna conscious interests foremost. And that's why these books should be heard, should be read, should be explained. This is a wonderful philosophy. <laughs> and it's so dynamic and so intricate also. And it pertains to our life in this world and in our future life in the, in the spiritual world. So interesting. If we're not interested in Krishna consciousness and we just take it as a routine uh, activity, we will, it's like, a, it's like being on the surface without even going into the essence. Yeah. It's like, like getting a donut and licking the glaze off the donut but not eating the donut. <laughs> Yes, my lord. Mm. We have to take an interest in Krishna and devotional service. Mm -hmm. And that interest is natural. If you give it a chance, it'll it'll grow on you. <laughs> it'll happen automatically. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Mataji, please go ahead. You raise your hands electronically. You can unmute yourself now. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Um, I, I don't know. Is a stupid answer, but I try. Um, uh, why um, Maharaj Parikshit uh, needed uh, need uh, seven day to um, uh, realization and uh, for example, uh, Bharat uh, need uh, a lot of life to realization, mm. to spiritual realization. Well, he was cursed to die in seven days. He didn't choose that. So he had seven days left, and he used all seven days to hear Bhagavatam. Ah, uh, yeah. That wasn't his choice. That was what was put upon him by that curse. Hmm. As soon as he got cursed, he didn't waste time. <laughs> he immediately got away from all of his material uh, association, material duties, and immediately went to the banks of the Jamuna. Hmm. Yeah. He can absorb. Yeah. But hey. you should not think, well, he had seven days and I have seven years. No, you should think that he had seven days and I don't even know if I have seven minutes. Mm -hmm. We should live our life like that. And that makes Krishna consciousness really uh, uh, powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you so much. There's one more question in the chat now from Vishaba Das Prabhu. He says, Hare Krishna, dear Gude, is it possible from loud chanting over and over again when we are going around doing service that we can distract other devotees? Is that possible? Or other devotees are in Maya to be distracted by it? Mm. You have to evaluate. You're the one that's doing it. What's happening? <laughs> mm. I can't say. Are you distracting people or are you purifying them? Interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is this is an interesting question because I know it, it's come up before. Um, I heard you know a group of people who are uh, who do even now online. Um, Lecture, they invite the Buddhists, uh, you know, senior devotees to come in and lecture and gurus to come in and lecture. And um, from one group, there was someone who 
other devotees complained about that when they were chanting together that she was too loud on the, <laughs> and it became a whole argument about it so that's when this person uh um who asked the question i really wanted to know well if, you, so, if, you, if you're chanting too loud or you're loud you're chanting and you're disturbing the other devotees then you should change okay So we should be more sensitive to the feelings of the body. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Right. Any other questions? Last questions? Otherwise, we'll have one more request to Maharaj. If Maharaj, if you want to chant one more round, uh, one round of um Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna.